Jamestown is the home of the world's largest buffalo and to many people of European descent. Last February, it also became home to 20 different Somali families who are here looking for the American dream. They left Somalia starting January 1991 when their country's government collapsed in civil war. If you come out of your house, like if you go shopping, you don't know if you're going to come back uh, alive or not. They killed my father and my big brother and my young brother. I think it became part of survival, you know, uh, to kill because, you know, when this guy has, you know, like uh, two or three kids and he doesn't have any way of uh, feeding them except, you know, like to get hired for that, you know, uh, warlord guy who is giving him a gun and say, you know, like, I'll pay you a hundred dollars if you take this gun and, you know, like, do whatever I tell you. Um, he will do it and that's, you know, uh, what they do. So a lot of people, when they get a chance to leave, that's like the happiest day they will have. They'll be so happy. If somebody says, oh, let me take you, you want to come to America, you want to go to Europe, that's a good good opportunity for them and they be, they want to be happy about that too. So at least they can start their life somewhere else and be happy and live a normal life. Somalis have taken refuge throughout the world. Many of the Somalis living in Jamestown have been U.S. citizens for up to 10 years and heard about North Dakota through friends living in Fargo and Grand Forks. You know, kids can go to school, it's good education, it's a good place to live in North Dakota. A few Jamestown people had met a Somali, but everyone had an opinion about them. I've never met any of them. Um, you know, I see them around, like at Walmart and stuff, but I'm not afraid or anything of the people from Somalia. I'm, I think that, you know, everyone should be welcome here. That's the whole basis for our country, uh, so. Somalians don't belong here because uh, they're taking housing vouchers that belong to us I also hear they're kind of rude when they go in stores and stuff, and um, a lot of people told me that, and, and uh, basically um, most of them are Muslims, and I hear Muslims are just moving to places to take them over. I asked if you'd met any or had any questions about them. Not really, no. I, I already know what I know already, so. City Council member Charlie Courageon works in a downtown office next to Jama's African Foods. A lot of the other well, Somalians have come in and I've got to know them and, and uh, they seem to know me and we get along pretty good. You should get to know them before you judge them uh, too severely. And uh, you know, that unfortunately, the, they're, most of them are Muslims and uh, there's a lot of bad press about the Muslims. And, People just judge everybody by <coughs> the bad ones, just like anything else. Somali men and women Somalis, sense judgment. They have seen the same thing I seen when I came here. Like, you know, why people looking at us like, you know, we different, like, you know, like we're in the wrong place. That's the same way I felt, you know, I have seen like, I have seen people look at me like, yo, you know, like I'm in somebody's house, you know what I mean? Like I came walk into your house and people look at me like, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing in my house? Like, you know. Somalis want to sustain their culture, but also want to be part of American culture. Because we live in America, you know, that is the only way we can survive here, you know, celebrate with the Americans. American it's easier life, said you know than mean? done. You know, we came from way different culture and country and we came here and you know, it's confusion, you know. So I'm glad that our kids, like her generation, my generation, the young ones, go to school Good and friend. bring home, you know, the experience of the school and teach the parents, you know. Most Somali men found jobs in Jamestown, but Somali women haven't been as fortunate. So we wait one day maybe, and we like it. When we got a job, say, yeah, we got a job. So we like it, we stay, you know. Mm -hmm. well, the pressure we have is, uh, you know, you have to pay light, you have to pay food, you have to pay your car. One Somali man's side job is educating his country through music. He's a member of Wild House, which means new era in English. Our goal is to tell the young generation that they're fighting for nothing. 
and all people giving them gun and you know drugs to kill each other. The group still collaborates and has added former militia members. When I listened to the band's music, I was convinced that I didn't belong to the battlefields. I decided to come out here and join them spread the message. But this educational alternative still has a deadly price. We got a lot of phone calls for the you know warlords. Uh, they're saying, if you don't stop it, we're going to kill you. We know where you are, guys. Uh, they sent me a couple of emails that they told me that at that time I was in Denver, Colorado. They told me that we know you're in Denver, Colorado. We're going to come there and get you. You know, and I was wondering, the next day they shoot one of my friends, the band elder, he's in, in Kenya. They shoot him a couple times in his stomach, you know. The group continues their battle in Somalia's civil war, hoping one day to peacefully sing and rap at home. Other Somalis plan to rebuild their country by attending college to bring home education. We are the future, you know. Everybody that survived it to get out of the country, Wherever they made it, Europe, you know, we are, we spread, we spread all around the world, you know. Somalians are not only in Jamestown, not only in America. Everybody in his mind, every Somalian live every corner in the world, his mind is coming back home one day. You know? For JCTV News, this is Richard Schmidt, Jamestown.